Hello and welcome to the first episode of the Right Discourse. Today, uh, the topic of our discourse is palm oil cultivation and its impact on the environment. So, why we have chosen this topic, palm oil cultivation? The palm oil which we are talking about is present in 50% of the packaged goods which you find in the convenience stores right now. Just because of the cultivation of the palm oil, thousands of acres of forest land is being destroyed in uh, is being destroyed in Indonesia, and uh, the habitats of Thousands of species are being snatched every year due to the palm oil cultivation. Whole big supply chain is uh, already involved in it. Government policies are involved in it, and this is this is this is causing a very serious issue right now. Two hundred thousand orangutans have been killed since 1990s till 2018. Every year, right now, the current data says that every year six thousand orangutans are being killed. UK, France, and Germany are the countries that are using 5% of the vegetable oils in their fossil fuels right now. EU has committed to raise this quota to 10% in the coming years. Indonesian government subsidizes every liter of the palm oil in their fossil fuels, and this all is this all has caused the whole government policies to enter into the palm oil cultivation market. This market is very big. Today we have with us on floor Mr. Rahul Raj. Who will be discussing about? Uh, who will be discussing about the palm oil cultivation with us today? Mr. Rahul Raj is a research scholar, and his uh, in his interest field lies in uh, sustainable development, clean energy, and environment. So, welcome Rahul to our show. The first question which I would like to ask you is: We are talking when we talk about palm oil cultivation, we talk about the destruction of the rainforest. Mm -hmm. So. Could you please let us know what is rainforest and why the destruction of rainforest are, is such a big issue and how does it affect the environment? So when we talk about rainforest, so these are the forests which are characterized by heavy rainfall and th these forests lie between the tropics, which are Tropic of Cancer and Tropic of Capricorn and these comprises of heavy rainfall which ranges from 245 to 250 or 75 centimeters and the whole climatic condition in those tropics is very favorable for a variety I mean very diverse range of flora and fauna. So the intertropical convergence zone, which is like north, south and south north wind. So actually they flow and they cause convection and rainfall, which is very good for the uh, for the nourishing and for the uh, for the growing for the growth of the yeah, plants and yeah, uh, right. yeah the flora. So, yeah. so what we are talking about rainfall is like it comprises of twenty eight percent of the global oxygen demand. Twenty eight percent of the global oxygen, oxygen demand. Yeah. Wow. And the whole that's a, that's a big number. Yeah, the, and one quarter of medicinal properties come from there. So the whole medicine that we are talking about, one quarter is a big number, and the whole around seventy five percent of the biotic species live there. So when you are talking about rainforest, we are not talking about plants. We are talking about a variety of animals. We are talking about a variety of uh, uh, amphibians. We are talking about a variety of reptiles and aquatic animals. And the deforestation is a very uh, easy term. Everyone knows it. So it's a massive scale cutting of forest for. In, uh, for very specific purposes like agriculture or urbanization or industrial setups. So according to a data, I will run you through the data. So 23 million acres of land is being destroyed. It means half of the species are losing their 23 home. million acres of land every year? Every year. It's a big number. And it leads to 50,000 of species to extinction per year. 50,000 species are undergoing extinction per year per year uh, because of deforestation of uh, the tropical rainforest and 30 acres of trees cut every minute it's around size of a football field per second so it really brings into perspective how how hampered how it has hampered the whole ecosystem in the those size areas. of a football field you mean to say is being cut every second every second yeah so that's a huge number so that's it means the complete destruction of the whole ecosystem and the flora and fauna and the food chain yeah right so rahul uh, I also I also came to know when I was uh, when I was having a small research regarding this topic I came to know that these forests are being uh, are the, the, uh, the fire is set on these forests and uh, these forests are creating a lot of uh, you know carbon dioxide emissions right. and I came to know that the carbon dioxide emission in Indonesia last year was as big as the carbon dioxide emission of the whole Brazilian Brazil, right. of the whole Brazilian country mm -hmm. in one year so that much of carbon dioxide was emitted out of the forest fire. In Indonesia, so do you think that uh, this forest fire is of much concern when the general people talk about it? They think that forest fire does not affect the human beings directly because they are living far from the forest, so it's, it's not of a big concern. Please give your expert opinion regarding this. So forest fire is a 
total catastrophe, I must say. So according to a figure, around 60,000 to 80,000 forest fire occurred, which resulted in destroy of 3 and 10 million hectares of land area. 310 million yeah. hectares of land area was yeah. destroyed due to the forest fire. Yeah. And when we talk about forest fire, it's not just about plants or animals, it's, it's also related to humans. Because I talked about the fact that what forest has to offer to humans as well. So when we talk about forest fires, we are talking about loss of logwood, we are talking about loss of vegetation, we are talking about loss of medicine, medicines that we get, we are talking about loss of whole oxygen circulation in our e ecosystem. And also, not only that, so the whole carbon emission is huge, humongous in quantity. That, that adds to the global warming as of well. Of course, so at one extent, the, the governments of the whole world are fighting for reducing carbon footprints. So what you do in a one year or two is being compensated by again the carbon emissions from the rainforest fire. So That's true. Yeah. It, it's almost equal. And besides, it makes no sense. Yeah, and besides carbon emissions, you have sulfur emissions, which are really dangerous. And you have unburnt particulates that is, that is really dangerous for your respiratory and cardiovascular problems. And also, it's, it's not just like uh, there is forest fire, it will, it will uh, cause damages to the local people living there. You must have seen the news of California for forest fires. Yes. Even celebrities' homes got burned in that. So yes. it's a big concern. So Raul, I also came to know about the death of orangutans in this uh, whole forest fire. And I came to know that more than 200,000 orangutans have been killed since 1990s. And they are extremely endangered species. So, um, on, and on the other hand, there is the livelihood of farmers. There is livelihood of the whole, uh, the, the whole workers who are involved in the complete supply chain. And I'm sure you must be having a data about the whole, uh, you know, the, 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 the market size of this whole palm oil business. So do you think that their livelihood is, will be snatched if we have a ban on this um, the palm oil cultivation or their livelihoods, you know, the, it, it's, just related yeah. to it's related to their the bread on the table. Mm -hmm. It's related to the uh, education of their children. It's related to their lifestyle. So don't you think that this all will be snatched if we just think about environment and if we think about you know the carbon dioxide emissions? So when you talk about orangutans, it, it's not just a specific animal. We are talking about the closest relative to humans. So orangutans they have ninety seven percent DNA similarity of humans. So we are ninety seven percent similar to human beings. Yeah, they say? are. They are the one, uh, one of the only kind of animals which tickles like humans do. They smiles when tickled. They they also they comprise like empathy and other characteristics related to humans. So you mean to say that much research can come out of that when we you know when we have a research on the evolution process? Yeah, that, that's a very being. big oh, uh, yeah. crucial key for evolution. But they are they are extremely too. endangered species endangered, right now. They are critically critically endangered. Yeah, critically endangered. That's the right word for IUCN, which is International Union for conservation of nature that decides which species go endangered or extinct or vulnerable. So that is done by IUCN, International I mean, Union for Conservation of Nature. Very right, you said. Yes. And also, we must say that this palm industry, so as you mentioned in the introduction itself, that it comprises of 50% of all the consumer goods that we consume. So be it uh, the biscuits or the chocolate. Biscuits? It is present in the biscuits. Of course, it's in biscuits and chocolate you are eating or shampoo that you're using for shower. Shampoo. So yeah. you mean to say that the shampoo which I use every day every day that comprises of the palm oil. palm oil so it's very very cost effective for business purposes mm -hmm. and it has like uh, you can grow it on a, on a big scale and it, it's very uh, labor intensive and cost effective production and not only about the production the whole supply chain is very unsustainable in this era so when you talk about the livelihood of the local farmers that you that you speak of so I think it's just giving them employment in, on a very short span of time. So when you see the whole bigger picture, the holistic approach of this whole dirty palm industry, you will come to know that in the long run, they, are being, they will be exploited by the big corporates, I must say. So when you say that we are giving employment to the local farmers and traders, you should also look at the future scenario. So, so you, you can say that we are giving employment to like coal mining and other dirty fossil fuels. But what would happen if we just employ them in renewable sector of energy field? So what? So people who are employed in coal industry, they can they could be employed in renewable se sector as well. So there should be a very inclusive and sustainable employment and economic growth. So we are not talking about just palm industry here. We are talking about the bigger perspective. And I think it's not just about the livelihood. It's also about the uh, the the uh, greedy capitalism. We must say so. 
as you say, the market size is quite humongous. If you see, it's around 58 US billion dollars. 58 billion dollars. 58 billion dollars. That's, that's a big size. That's a big size. And big corporates are involved in that. And and there are certain uh, local stakeholders which are fighting against that. So, yeah, that's a, that's a big amount. So you mean to say that the population which is, which is employed in the palm oil industry, they could be shifted to other uh, sectors of the economy and that would create a more sustainable environment? I'm not... I'm not saying to just shift them to other sectors of economy. I'm just saying that you could employ them in a sustainable palm oil cultivation itself. Sustainable palm oil cultivation. Yeah, that's a, that's a very okay, good okay, okay. So we'll, we'll, we'll talk about that a bit later. Okay. I would like to ask you one more question. There is a lot of boycott movement going on over here. Greenpeace is involved yeah. in it. Many yeah. other organizations are involved in it. They are saying to boycott all those products mm -hmm. which are using you know, palm oil. But the problem here is that you don't know which product is using palm oil or not. As you said, the detergents, toothpaste, you know, my shampoo has palm oil. Even I was not yeah, 50%. Really, I was yeah. shocked so, to know that. And even there are many names of palm oil. How would someone come to know that uh, this, this product has got palm oil and it is going to be boycotted? This boycott movement itself is so weak that if 10 people boycott something, it's not going to create a big impact. Do you think that this boycott movement is something, uh, you know, which can create an impact? So talking about the boycott movement itself, so when you think that individual, indiv an individual does not have got power or impact, you are uh, you are quite wrong. So I must uh, I must quote someone. I don't remember the name, but he said in the world infin with infinite problems and issues, it's it's not affordable not to have a social impact. So so it's an individual who will create an impact. It's you who will create impact. It's me who will create an impact. So I think the local stakeholders or international stakeholders like uh, NGOs or IGOs like Greenpeace that you mentioned, they are doing a commendable job, I must say. So what they did in the recent news, you must have followed it, that they just uh, they just got onto, boarded a, a ship that was transporting palm oil in the Netherlands and they just, they just halted it. Like they were protesting so aggressively against it and I appreciate it because there has to be someone. Even... Greenpeace International must have been started by an individual or two. So it's individual who is going to make a change. So Mahatma Gandhi will say, if you want to see the change in the world, be the change. Be the change. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But some somehow, you know, the whole policy framework is involved in it. Many things which they do is being called as, uh, you know, illegal, irrational, and people are having, uh, you know, uh, they, they, they are being imprisoned, they are being charged about it. So we will not go that deep into yeah. it. My last question, Rahul, in this discourse is, what policy frameworks do you think would be very sustainable while we use the palm oil as well and as well as we we save our rainforest, we save our orangutans, we save our, uh, we save our, um, uh, you know, the local, these, these, yeah, yeah. The, the whole ecosystem. Yeah. So what do you think is an alternative or what do you think is the best way for the most sustainable uh, way of doing the same which we are doing so that the economy as well as the ecology. Both can run parallel. Yeah. yeah. So, environment and development that has been always been talked against each other. Sure. So whenever we talk about development, we talk about some social costs related to environment. But recent, I mean, there were several scholars who are working toward uh, walking side by side with each other, and I must say that there has to be government intervention in that. The whole supply chain is too big, too complicated that. Uh, local NGOs or IGOs, they have no, they have no um, leverage in that. So I think local governments like Indonesia that you say that they are, they have subsidized the use of biofuels. I must say that, yeah, it's uh, very frankly speaking that palm oil is a very good alternative for fossil fuels. It's a good uh, uh, biodiesel, biofuel you must say. So, so what could be done to achieve those benefits of, out of it? So there's two options. Either you go for alternatives, which are like uh, Jetropa or certain LG, which have the same property as um, biofuels. But if you want to rely more on palm oil, which is very sustainable and very cost effective, you have to cultivate them. You have to bring the entire value proposition in that. You have to, entire, you have to assimilate the whole supply chain into very sustainable and uh, socially inclusive for, way. And for that, there, there was an uh, organization which, which was called uh, the Round Table on Sustainable Palm Oil. So it's a, it's a group of stakeholders which certifies certain local traders or businesses to conduct a very uh, sustainable palm oil uh, business. Mm -hmm. so, so what they do, they have uh, uh, offices in Malaysia or Indonesia. So what they do, they certify 
certain local uh, local uh, traders and local cultivators and they also certify the businesses and they ask them to buy from those certain certified local traders so those local traders are certified of certified of just uh, making their own cultivation in a sustainable way so i think by doing that they could achieve a very sustainable way also the government mechanism has to come into force so there are two mechanisms as you already know it's the first is market mechanism and second is command and control so i think we should consider it a very uh, global critical emergency i must say for now so it's not we are not just talking about orangutans here we are talking about the entire species we are talking about entire rainforest entire environment, environment which is environment. directly connected to the human beings yeah, and, and it, doesn't, it doesn't yeah. it doesn't depend on your nationality it doesn't depend on ethnicity it doesn't depend on your income so it affects everyone equally so i think the government must come in the local uh, the non state actors yes 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 i agree point all thank you very much for becoming a part of our show today thank you thank you we for will be you. perhaps we'll be having you in in, in our next shows so <laughs> as you. as rahul said that the whole the whole governmental structures the whole ngos the non state actors and as well as the local stakeholders individual stakeholders must come into um, must come into action and they must think that what are we doing to our environment how this is directly going to impact our environment and what we can do regarding this i am not sure what the indonesian government is doing to control the pollution to control the degradation of the environment and to work in the field of sustainable development i am sure that there must be some policy makers who must be thinking about it how to control it in next 30 years when the whole policy framework is already into uh, has has come already into this field i am not sure how it will be controlled so i am leaving it on the discretion of our viewers to decide what what do they actually think is good for this environment and is sustainable for this world thank you very much for watching our show 